Good morning, it's Councillor Glenn here, and I am on Crantham Crescent, and check out these skeletons. This is great. Um, it's uh, Crantham Crescent. Today the skeletons are on a Zoom meeting, and uh, every day Scott and Chelsea and their family here come up with a different scene with the skeletons. Anyhow, good stuff. Crantham Crescent, come check it out. Um, they're gonna have a, a QR code here later on where you can scan it and make a donation to the snowsuit fund which is a, a great idea too okay some updates um first of all on covid since i spoke to you last ottawa hit a big milestone 90 percent of people in ottawa now have at least a first dose and um, that's that's great news i think you've probably heard on monday some of the restrictions for restaurants and gyms and other locations where you can show um, proof of vaccination, the, the, the capacity limits are increasing. That's also good. Um, a little bit related to COVID, starting on Monday morning, you can register at ottawapublichealth.ca for uh, a spot at one of our public flu shot clinics. So that's starting Monday morning. Flu shots are also available at a lot of pharmacies now and local doctors. So it's a flu shot season. If you can remember to go out and do that, that would be great. Um, I'll share some local things first of all. Um, actually, in, in this neighborhood, Crossing Bridge, um, you might have seen some trucks uh, doing some digging into the ground and uh, uh, a bit of work. It's cathodic protection of our water mains. So there are some anodes that are attached to the water mains to extend the life of the water mains. It's kind of interesting if you're into, uh, if you're into chemistry and so on. Go to uh, ottawa.ca and search, search for cathodic protection and it's uh, interesting how that process works and what it does. Um, over uh, around the Liard Street, Cherry Drive and Caribou Drive, that whole area, all the streets in there, Bell is going to be starting their work in the next week or so for in, uh, installation of fiber optic cable. Uh, if you're looking for more information on any work that Bell's doing in our community, go to glengower.ca slash bell. And we've got a page there keeping up to date different timelines and contacts for that work. Uh, if you're in the south part of Stittsville near Shea Road near the rec center, or also Fernbank near Eden Wild, you might see a bit of construction starting there. Uh, now the detours aren't starting yet, but later on in the fall, there are gonna be some detours. Um, the city's building a trunk sewer uh, in, in that area. So it's gonna cross under Shea Road and under Fernbank Road um, around uh, the Eden Wild area. So there's gonna be some um, uh, detours starting in November, but the work to create those bypass roads for the detours is starting this week. So watch for that. Um, also reminded, wanted to remind folks, um, some of you may have yet to empty your pools. We've got a, a lot of pools in Crossing Bridge as well. Uh, just a reminder that, that that water coming out of pools, it's chlorinated water, lots of chemicals in that water. Um, please do not empty your pools into the stormwater onto the onto the street. Uh, what you can do is uh, is you can empty it onto onto your own property. You can empty it into the sanitary sewers. So call up a plumber and have them connect to the same water that goes down your toilet or your sink. Or you can call a company that will remove that with a, a truck for you. But really trying to avoid sending all those chemicals down the drain in the community. Um, let's see, I think that's all the local things I wanted to say. We've had a, a super busy week. How fitting is it that, that these uh, skeletons are in front of Zoom? I think over the past week and a half, I've spent six full days, good morning, six full days in committee meetings, uh, seven or eight hours average on day. We, uh, per day, we've been dealing with a lot of city business right now. Uh, this week, we wrapped up day three of three for our official plan meetings. We heard from over 90 delegations and uh, we had about 60 or 70 motions to make some alterations to the official plan. It's the guiding document for how our city is going to grow over the next 25 years. Uh, overall, it's, um, it's, it's a, a much improved document from what we started with uh, about a week and a half ago. And uh, it goes to council next week. I'll, I'll provide some updates, overview about what exactly we have, um, we have in front of us because there's some important changes that will change and improve the way that uh, new suburbs like out here in Stittsville develop over the next, uh, over the next couple of decades as well. We also had a meeting about the central branch, the new downtown Ottawa Public Library, Adisoki. I think I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but uh, A-D-I-S-O-K-E. Uh, there is a, an increase to cost due to 
uh, construction inflation largely due to COVID. So we met as a council to figure out uh, how, we will, um, how we will bridge that gap in financing. This is a partnership with the federal government, so they're picking up quite a bit of the tab as well. And then, as you probably have heard, we had a long meeting on Wednesday with our Transit Commission, received an update on what's happening with LRT and the return to service plan. Uh, now, RTG says they can return to service on November 1st. What we heard from our staff was more likely it'll be middle of November first couple weeks in November for return to service. We've hired a company called TRA out of Philadelphia. They are doing an independent safety review, not only of the derailment, uh, also of the return to service plan, but they're also looking at the entire operation and how, uh, how RTG is managing the maintenance and operations of those trains. Uh, I found their advice on Wednesday extremely useful. And before those trains go back to service, they're gonna be holding another briefing for the media, for the public, and for councillors, where we can get some more information about what they're finding through this study. So that's a good thing as well. Uh, coming up, coming up, coming up. We've got a busy week, week and a half coming up. On Monday, 6 p.m., hope you can join Jibby King. Jibby is a Spitzville resident. She's gonna be giving a webinar on indigenate and indigeneity in Canada, talking about issues around reconciliation. Uh, I saw her give a talk for the Goulburn Museum uh, a couple months ago, it was excellent. She'll be with us from 6 to 7 p.m. and you can find registration info on my website. Um, we have a budget meeting right after that at 7 p.m. I'm joining with uh, Councillor Hoobley in Canada South and Councillor Teresa Cavanaugh in Bay Ward and we're gonna be doing a, an information session and Q&A on the city budget. That's on Monday as well. Again, you can find information on my website. On Tuesday, doing a Councillor chat. So this is 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. It'll be on Zoom and Facebook Live. And if you have any questions, it'll be uh, there for an hour to answer any of your questions. And next weekend, a few things I wanted to highlight. On October 30th, um, late morning, early afternoon, there's a cleanup and some activities happening at the Kemp Woodland. This is organized by the Stittsville Land Keepers, and uh, that's a, a group that Jesse Lazansky has started up. Uh, she was the uh, student who did the uh, guide to natural Stittsville, and uh, the, the Stittsville Land Keepers are, are going to start taking on a number of projects to help uh, stewardship and caretaking of natural areas in our community, which is great. Um, so there's some information on stittsvillecentral.ca about that, um, also on Facebook about that if you're looking for info. And I'll share some informa information as well. Uh, October 31st is Halloween. Uh, we have a costume contest, uh, Team Stittsville. If uh, you want to show us your creative costume ideas, post a photo to Instagram and tag Councillor Glenn or you can send an email of your costume to glenn.gower at ottawa.ca. We've got some great prizes from local businesses, so just wanna see how creative Stittsville can be with your costumes this year. And then October 31st, uh, 4.30 to 6 p.m., my team and I, we're, we're gonna be at Village Square Park handing out some Halloween candy, uh, just uh, as, a, as a hello and a, a treat for, for kids. So that's, uh, that's Halloween. The day after Halloween, the con uh, tradition continues here in Stittsville with November 1st, and the uh, annual pumpkin parade at Village Square Park. This year, they're partnering with a group called Toasty Toes, who will be collecting uh, socks um, for charity, which is a great initiative. And uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is uh, Stittsville photographer John Edkins has a photo exhibit right now at the Stittsville Library. So if you're near the library, check it out. Uh, some great photos from John. I think that's it. That's a lot of updates this morning. I uh, hope you have a chance to get outside. It's a little frosty this morning. Maybe you can see my, my breath here, but it's a nice sunny day. Have a walk around Crossing Bridge. Check out Crantham Crescent and the skeletons here. Uh, they'll be changing every day. So every day, a different scene of skeletons and, and uh, even the skeleton dog. It's great. Happy Halloween, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you next weekend.